Penguin Classics presents Performing of Mice and Men, a conversation about the Steinbeck classic with James Earl Jones. You first acted in Of Mice and Men in 1955. Where was the production and what role did you play? <laughs> it was at the Walt Whitman Theater at Brooklyn College. I had started studying, I'd just gotten out of the Army, and I, I started studying acting at the American Theater Wing. And there was a bunch of us ex, you know, veterans and uh, there on the GI Bill. And we, we, we decided to, there was a young man named Yabo Yablonsky, who I became, uh, he's, a, he's a beloved to me now. He's passed away, but he had an idea that we could do a play while we were being students. And he had some kind of connections with uh, Brooklyn College in the, in the theater out there. So from the group of us students, he cast uh, Of Mice and Men, and me being a, the black one, the African-American one, I got to play the role of Crooks. The main thing I remember that's worth sharing is that uh, I'd never done any professional acting before. This was not a commercial production, but it was, it was a serious production. And uh, Yabo and the whole crew took it very seriously. So we actors had to take it very seriously. It wasn't like studying. It wasn't like doing a scene in class. It was it was looking for the right choices uh, to play the characters and the, for the right results. In classes, we did, we didn't worry about results. We worried about the act of approaching a character. Now we were looking for results. I had to deal with crooks who was a cripple. Uh, he'd been kicked in the back by a mule. Uh, he was also black, and he, had, he was feeling the pains of prejudice. So I had those two things to deal with. How did you approach the role of Crooks in your performance, and how does he relate to Lenny? Uh, I remember uh, there was a perverse joy that Crooks had, because Lenny was considered the dummy. I mean, the the whole camp, the whole farm where, where they worked. Uh, oh, he's the, the the dummy. Go go go! Call the dummy. Have the dummy bring some water. Uh, uh, he was retarded. Crooks, being uh, an underclass person, being a black in a predominantly uh, white society, even though it was California, it was still a very bigoted world, even on the farm, isolated farms, um, where migrant workers were from all over. You know. Crooks, for the first time, felt it was somebody worse off than he was. He, uh, he had a head, took a perverse joy in it. He loved how dumb he felt that uh, Lenny was. Uh, he would go into peals of laughter when lady would say something he thought was really, really dumb. Oh, you, you dummy. Uh, I'm smarter than you are, you know, that, that sort of thing. I'm not sure if that's what Steinbeck intended, but I, I was, the, the, that perverse joy was triggered in me as, as a human being, as an actor, playing that role. And I said, well, it's what's happening to me, I'll play it, you know. And the young man playing uh, Lenny was good at not playing it unaware that I was mocking him. He just wasn't not aware of that. So they left me free to mock him all I wanted to. Not a healthy relationship, but it was one that had a great deal of energy for me and dynamic. In your second turn with Of Mice and Men in 1967, where was this production and what role did you play? Uh, the second production was... Uh, uh, another university uh, situation. It was uh, out at Purdue University. A friend of mine from summer stock days in Michigan, uh, Joe Stockdale, had formed a professional theater at Purdue University. And he would invite professional actors from New York and California 
to come fill in uh, with the students. And they'd do professional production where it was on some kind of contract where they, they could uh, open the doors to a paying audience. And this time, my father was hired, uh, cast to play Crooks. And I got to play Lenny. So the tables were turned on me. I, I played the dummy this time. I couldn't deal with it, with that sort of uh, pejorative word. I I just tried to start understanding Lenny's condition, uh, his his retarded condition. And in, in those days, in especially when Seinberg wrote the play, and even in the time we we did the play, what did you say, fifty something? Sixty-seven. Uh, words like idiot, moron, retard, or, or retardate, those are not insulting words. Those, those were scientific words used by scientists to define someone who was uh, impaired. People tend to take those words and use them with a negative attitude, and then they become slurs, you know. And that, that's what has happened to those words. And I, I mainly remember that I, I really loved the character. I loved Lenny. As much as I had mocked him when I played Crooks, I realized that I loved his innocence. And it wasn't just innocence like a child's innocence. It was, this man has seen a lot uh, on the farms, and, and he killed a lot already. Killed a lot of animals. Inadvertently. I wouldn't say he was a compulsive killer, but that potential was in him. So he's not just a cuddly bear. He's not a toy. He's not a he's not to be messed with, you know. By the actors especially. You, you, you actors should not treat him like he's harmless. He's not harmless. So I learned that much. Had John Steinbeck offered any advice to you about the characters he conceived? Well, I had I had an occasion to meet John Steinbeck uh, uh, sometime before that. I think at the UN or something, you know, some sort of program going on over there. I wrote to him and I said that I had an opportunity to play uh, one of his characters that was written as a white person, but I want to play him as myself, and I'm a black person, as you might remember. And he said, "Well, Jim." If you're worried about the scenes where the word, the N-word is used in Lenny's presence, I don't think Lenny knows what the word means. It has no social meaning to him. So you as an actor can be in the presence of people using that word and it just goes in one ear and out the other. So I was really asking, would you change anything? Would you, the writer change anything if you had a black actor playing Lenny? And his answer was, no, I wouldn't change a thing. You're a human being. You're cast to play this other human being. Uh, the fact that Lenny is white is not relevant at all to Lenny. We had some things to rationalize uh, for ourselves between George and me. George was played by Ed Satrakian, who was, who was a Armenian-American. Not quite as dark as I was, but he was he was an ethnic, you know. And uh, the question of other farmers, other field hands, other migrants, wondering why this non-African American guy wandering around the, uh, the country with this African American guy, what's going on there? In the story that Steinbeck wrote, it's rationalized that... Um, George knew Lenny's auntie, and uh, Lenny's auntie had explained that Lenny was kicked in the head by a mule, but he was impaired, mentally impaired. And she more or less put Lenny in, in, uh, in George's care. And George felt obliged to take care of Lenny for the rest of his life. One of George's lines to the um, members of the bunkhouse was that uh, George says, Lenny's my cousin. <laughs> you had a, an Armenian-American guy saying a black African-American guy is his cousin. Uh, 
he said it. They, we didn't cut the line because uh, Mrs. Steinbeck recommended, recommended not to change a thing. Uh, you got, you got, a, you got a, a look, and sometimes you got a giggle from the audience. But we, 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 we managed to keep everything in, in intact. Tell us about the psychology tests that you took at Purdue University at the time you were performing as Lenny and what you learned from it. I mentioned Joe Stockdale. Uh, he's still, still a friend of mine. He's, he's writing now. He's, he's retired from teaching. Uh, he had a, we had a mutual friend, uh, an actress who had worked with us in the Summerstock Theater in Manistee, Michigan. And Pamela had played... Um, Blanche Dubois in the season before we did Mice and Men. She played in the uh, Tennessee Williams play, A Streetcar Named Desire. A psychology professor for undergraduate studies had come to see the play, her play, and said, you know, sitting there in the audience, if I didn't know I was watching a play, but I was watching, I was asked to observe as a scientist this human being up there, behaving the way she was behaving, I'd say, yeah, she's, uh, she's schizophrenic from what she's saying and the way she's behaving. If I didn't know it was a play, if I accepted it as real life, I'd say she's schizophrenic. So he started developing a theory about what happens to actors when they engage themselves, when they engage their mind and their behavior their, into a character. So when I came up there with Lenny, he asked me, let's let's follow up on this experiment. Let's have you come into one of my uh, graduate uh, psychology classes as Lenny. So do all you can to look like Lenny, more than you do on on stage. You you might use makeup on stage. Don't, Don't use makeup here. Look as real as you can. Look like you came through the country wandering around lost or whatever, but the authorities, like the sheriff, picked you up in a cornfield in, in Indiana and brought you in, and uh, they decided to bring you over to have you tested at the university. Whether that makes sense or not, just, you know, we, we'll, we'll make up a scenario that would rationalize your being in my class. And I'm the professor that was in charge of not only uh, testing you, but also having my students have the advantage of studying you and testing you. This professor had uh, one of his graduate students uh, do the testing uh, behind a one-way glass. The The class was on that side, and, and the student and I, as Lenny, were on you know the side, that, uh, like, like we are now in a, in a cubicle. And the student started testing me, and the questions he asked me, Lenny, I could fake them. I could sort of figure out how Lenny would respond to just ordinary questions. I could play dumb, I'll put it that way. But when it came to the Rorschach test, I didn't know what to do. And I started responding to the Rorschach test as myself. At one point, the student got up and left the room, left the cubicle where we were doing the test, and went to the professor and said, I I think we should have him committed because there's such a disparity between what he's able to say to me and what he's able to read on those Rorschach tests. It's something really wrong with him and dangerously wrong with him. So I think we should stop the test now and have him committed. (laughs) I, di- I didn't count that as a good, act- a good acting exercise. It was just an accident of what kind of test I was being thrown, was being thrown at me. We hope that you've enjoyed this conversation with James Earl Jones. Mr. Jones was speaking with Elda Rotor, editorial director for Penguin Classics. Recorded at Plush Studios, NYC. Post-production by John McElroy. Gas House Productions. Copyright 2011. All rights reserved.